Section 12.5 looks at volume of prisms and cones, or pyramids and cones. Pyramids and cones. So 12.5 volume of pyramids and cones. There we go. That sounds better. So we start off with our formula for looking at the volume of a pyramid. Volume of a pyramid is given to us as one-third the base area times the height, which is this one right here. Now, if we look at how that was different than a prism, a prism gave us it was just the base area times the height. Why we suddenly have this one-third? If we were to draw a prism around this pyramid, we would see that the amount of space taken up is actually one-third if it, oh, we should say if it's the same height. I'm going to fix that here. Ignore that extra piece on top. But let's say I have a prism of the same height as this pyramid and the same base. This pyramid actually takes up one-third of the volume. So we don't want that entire volume as with a prism. We want one-third of it. We could relate this back to if we talk about a triangle. If we looked at the area of a triangle, we have to remember it's one-half the base times the height. Now, I realize that's a two-dimensional example here, but we have a very common error of looking at a triangle and a rectangle and forgetting that one-half. If we don't include this one-third in this volume formula, we're not going to get the accurate value for the pyramid. So, one-third base area times the height. For the volume of a cone, which is, we talked about our circular version of a pyramid, the circle as the base, we start off with the same, one-third the base area times the height, but we can change that base area, because it's a circle, to be pi r squared, one-third pi r squared times the height, where b is the area of the base, h is the height, and r is the radius of the base. So these are the two formulas we're going to work with to find our volumes. So let's start off looking at a triangular pyramid. So our formula is one-third the base area times the height. I'm going to draw my base. It's four by six. And the base area, oh, we just talked about a triangle a minute ago, is going to be one-half four times six, which gives us two times six, or 12 meters squared. The height is this value on the inside. It's that vertical distance. We have to make sure we're using that one. So the height is nine. We can now substitute in. We get one-third times 12 times nine. Now, as we have this one-third showing up, if we get a value that's divisible by three, we're going to divide that by three so we can get rid of the one-third and just simplify our answer from there. If maybe there wasn't, that wasn't divisible by three, we'd still have to divide by three at the end, but it's, sometimes it's nice to get rid of the fraction early on um, in the simplifying process. Well, I can divide 12. I could even divide nine by three. I'm just going to divide 12 by three, and that's four. So leaves me with four times nine, or 36 meters cubed. Now, next one, we're looking at a cone. Our volume for a cone was one-third pi r squared times the height. Now, this is really the first example we've had where it's not a height or not a, a pyramid or a cone that lines up straight above. And that's OK. It can be shifted off a little bit when we're looking at here. The key thing is, is it's going to be perpendicular to the base. And even though that's shifted off, we still have a right angle formed here. We can still use that as the height. When we've talked about surface area before, we had something called slant height. If we had the slant height, we would have to go back and find the height, but that'll typically be on a uh, cone or a pyramid that lines up in the middle. So it doesn't really apply here. We can use this. We get one-third pi times 2.2 squared times 4.5. Now, if I actually took 4.5 and divided by 3, this one, even though it doesn't get rid of the fraction, it makes it a little bit nicer, and it makes it 1.5. And then let's get 2.2 squared. That's that, that one. So 4.84. And then I'm dividing 4.5 by 1 third. So that's 1.5. Now I have 4.84 times 1.5 gives me 7.26 pi centimeters cubed. We could leave it in terms of pi, or we could multiply that by pi, and we get it's approximately 22.8 centimeters cubed. Okay, let's 
Let's look at another example here. Now we're looking at the volume of a composite solid. So now we're combining a couple things together. So for this one, I have a pyramid, and I have a cube, or a uh, rectangular or a square prism. We could even look at it as, but it's a prism nonetheless. So I'm going to combine the volume of this pyramid and the volume of this prism. So volume of the pyramid plus the volume of the prism. Also, we could realize it is a cube. It's going to give us our total. So we have to solve them separately. Looking at the pyramid, I have it 6 by 6, and then the height is 6. So that's 1 third the base area times the height. Our base is a square, so that's 6 by 6, or 36, and our height is 6. Well, I can take one third of either 36 or 6. I'm going to take one third of 36. It's a bigger number. If I take a third of it, it kind of leaves me with smaller numbers. That leaves me with 12 times 6, or 72 meters cubed. Now, we still have to find the volume of the prism, or the volume of the cube, but let's take a second and realize here that the volume of that pyramid was supposed to be one-third the volume of a prism with the same dimensions. And this is the opportunity we have here. The base is the same, the height is the same. So a prediction we could have is that the volume of this pyramid, if I multiply that by 3, is that going to be the volume of the prism? Well, 72 times 3 is 216. So let's write that off to the side and see if that's what we actually get. So volume of the prism We have 6, 6, and 6. Base area times height. So my base is 6 by 6, or 36. My height is 6. 36 times 6 gives us 216. So it worked out here. It was, in fact, triple. Tripled the volume of the pyramid. Now to find the total volume, I'm going to do 72 plus 216 which gives me 288 meters cubed. Okay, a few more examples to finish up here. First one, I have a cone. My formula is one-third pi r squared times the height. Our height is perpendicular to the base, so we can use that one. One-third pi times one squared times two. That's one-third pi times one times two. We can just make that a two. Becomes two-thirds pi meters cubed. That is simplified in terms of pi. If we wanted it as a decimal, that is about 2.1 meters cubed, if we just round to one decimal place. But it does say leave in terms of pi. That one is acceptable. Okay, next problem is a pyramid. It is a triangular pyramid. Now, we could technically have either this side as the base or this side as the base. But in either case, they'd be the exact same. So let's just treat this as usual as our base. So the volume is one-third the base area times the height. Our base is a triangle that's three by four. Therefore, the base area is one-half 4 times 3. Half of 4 is 2, so that gives me 6. I have 1 third times 6 times 3. I get 6 times 3 is 18, divided by 3 gives me 6 inches cubed. Last one we have is our hexagonal pyramid. We write our formula. It's one-third the base area times the height. If we look, we already know the height is 17, but we're going to have to do a little bit of work here to find the area of our base, which is a hexagon. Since we know our side lengths are 12, to find the base area, it's one-half the apothem times the number of sides times the side length. Well, already we know the number of sides is 6 and the side lengths are 12. We need to find what the apothem is. Hopefully you remember that we need to cut this triangle out, and then cut it in half, and we actually get a 60 degrees here, 30 degrees at the top, and 90 degrees there. It's a 30, 60, 90. If 
Furthermore, we take half of that 12, and that would be 6. Now we need to go from the shorter leg to the longer leg of a 30, 60, 90. In order to do that, we multiply by root 3, which gives us 6 root 3, which is our opossum. Now, I take half of that, and I get, or half of 6 root 3, I have the 1 half. That gives me 3 root 3. 6 times 12 is 72. 3 root 3 times 72 gives me 216 root 3. So that is my base area. Not done yet, that's just the area of this base. I still need to factor in the volume of the whole thing. So that's B. That goes up here. Volume is 1 third times 216 root 3 times 17. I could multiply 216 by 17, but I could also actually divide 216 by 3 and get 72. So it's 72 root 3 times 17, which then got off track here. Things organize. 72 root 3 times 17. We get 949 root 3 feet cubed as our volume. Now, make sure you pick the right formula as you go through. Always look to find the correct base area as you're solving the problems. And if, even though we didn't see any examples like this, if they were to give you a slant height on a problem, you always want to get back to the height. And if you needed that, you would do Pythagorean theorem to get to it.